So this is a tutorial of how to make a polymer clay cow magnet. Okay. And the colors for the cow, um, you can really use, uh, as long as you use white for the, for, for one of the colors, um, the other color here doesn't really matter, uh, because what we're actually going to do is we're going to be mixing these colors so it can be any shade as long as you have two shades of that color so for example i used the color i used was red here and i mixed um i mixed one shade of pink here and then after that for the nose and for the antlers i mix or not the antlers the horns i mixed a different shade of pink so as long as you have the white um the other color doesn't really matter and the black is drawn in with a sharpie now this next step we're gonna have our transparency so these are the transparencies that they used to use on the overhead projectors um this step is only necessary if you don't really have a flat surface so you can see like if you're working on like for example a textured surface you don't want to roll your clay on a textured surface because it's going to pick up that texture right so what you're going to do is you're going to use your transparency as a surface and we can just cut out a small square to be our working surface So let's start by making the making the main part of the head of the cow first and with that to make that we're going to use just white clay. Now since we're using white clay, uh make sure you wash your hands thoroughly um to get as much dust off as possible. You um it's going to be pretty hard to keep it completely clean. Um but there are ways which you can minimize how dirty it gets and that would be uh, washing your hands first and handling white clay first before you handle other colors. And if you're gonna handle white clay after handling another color, then you should go and wash your hands with soap first. So for us to prevent um, the white clay from getting too dirty and getting contaminated by other colors, we're gonna make everything that we're going to make the main part of the body first because it is white. So what I'm going to do is first just roll this into a circle or roll this into a, a sphere, a ball. So now that we have a relatively round sphere, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Now we're gonna make it a bit longer, so it's almost like an egg shape. So the size of the head of this cow should be, um, once you flatten it, and I'll, I'll show you, that, that'll be in the next step, okay? Should be the, it should be bigger than this magnet, so that way this magnet doesn't show. So right now it's obviously smaller, but it'll, it'll be, it will be bigger once I flatten it. Right now we're just making the sphere into more of like an egg shape. We're just making it longer. And to do that, we're gonna just roll the sphere sideways like this, okay? So once, so now that's, I think this is about long enough, maybe a bit longer, okay, that's good. So now we're gonna flatten it. So just lightly, you're not pressing it really hard, okay? You're just lightly tapping it so it will flatten, okay? And you can see right now it's more of like, you can see some corners, you want, you don't want that. You want it to be an oval. So you see corners like right here, you want to press down on it and you can press inwards just to make it an oval. So now let's look at the shape. It's pretty close to an oval, but there's still some corners, maybe like right here. So I can press those back in.
Let's see, that's getting there. That's pretty close. Maybe I'll push down here a little bit. It doesn't need to be completely perfect. But just get a general oval that get a general oval that does stick up a little bit and it should be bigger than this magnet. So if we turn it around and we look, uh maybe it can be a bit bigger. Okay. So I'll just if it needs to be bigger, I'll just flatten it a bit more. Make sure it's there's no corners. Just but we can do that by just squeezing around here and lightly tapping it. So let's see. See that's pretty good. So the magnet sh is not going to stick out from the edges now. So now, now we have the body of the cow that's pretty much done. Okay, remove it. There we go. So now we can put this to the side and we'll work on the other parts. So now we're going to do the other parts of the cow. So we use this side of the transparency um, for the white or if you didn't use a transparency you use this part of the table for the white. So we don't, we want to keep this part of the table for, roll, for just rolling whites um, and we'll use a different part of the table or we can flip this around so that way we don't contaminate the side that is specifically for um, rolling the color white because we don't want to get any of the white colors dirty. So now we're gonna make the other parts of the cow um, and to, to do that we're gonna have to mix colors. So you're gonna need you're gonna choose one color and you're gonna need two shades of it. One is gonna be a really really light shade um, and the other is gonna is gonna also gonna be a light shade but not as light. So to start we're going to use about half of how much we used to make the body okay of white we're going to use about half of how much so this might be a bit more than half but that's okay i'll just have i'll just have extra and to that we are going to add a little bit of the color that we are mixing in so for me i am making a cow that has pink spots so to this white I'm going to add a little bit of red and you can see the amount of red I'm adding is not a lot okay and we're just gonna mix that together so I've been mixing this so all you really do when you mix is you just squeeze it together and you fold it and you squeeze it together and you fold it and you squeeze it together and just continuously do that. You can see I'm squeezing it together and once it's flat I just fold it over. So you're gonna keep on doing that until the color is very solid and you don't see any lines. Right now you can see it's not exactly solid. You can still see some unevenness, some lines here and there. So we're gonna keep on going. So now I have my pink that I've made use, uh, mixing the white and the red so this pink is going to be my darker shade of pink i'm going to make another shade okay that is lighter because remember we need two different shades here okay so to make that i'm going to take about one quarter of this pink so i'm going to take one quarter put this on the side you're going to need this and then to that, we're going to mix it in with some more white. So maybe we use about this much. And we're going to do the same thing. So press, 
just go s squeeze it when it's flat and then fold it. And then same thing, squeeze it, fold it. Okay. So I finished mixing this, um, but I think that it's still too dark. So what I can do is just add more white to this, or I could even just peel this in half, okay, and I'll just add more white to one of the halves so that it will be even lighter. So you can really adjust the colors you want depending on how you want your cow to look. The this darker color is going to be what the spots of the cow are going to be made of, and this lighter color is going to be what the nose and the horns are going to be made out of. So however light you want to make it, you can add more white. Um, however dark you want to make it, you can add more of the other color. Just remember that to mix colors, you're usually going to be mixing um, a lot more white into the other color because um, it's if you it's gonna take a lot more white to actually lighten the color than you think. Um, that's why you see a lot of the times when I'm mixing, I actually use um, really little of the color, and I actually have a lot more white to the point where I actually mixed in a lot of white into this already, and I still find that it it's too dark. So I'm gonna mix more even more white into it. So I finished mixing this light pink now, and I'm pretty happy with the two colors that I have. One thing I want to show you is my hand. So you can see that after um, handling the white clay, I'm actually starting to have a lot of white clay residue on my hands. And if you were to start handling a darker colored clay like brown, you would actually also contaminate that color as well. So it also applies backwards as well. So it's really important for you to um, clean your hands when you're working with different colors, especially when there's a big contrast between the colors. So if you're going from like white to brown or brown back to white or, or black, um, it's, it's, uh, it's important that you clean your hands with soap and water uh, just so you don't contaminate uh, the different colors. So now we're going to start assembling our cow. So on the transparency, so this side was for the white, or for you it might just be a, a different side, a different part of the table. So I have washed my hands because now I'm handling, I'm going to be handling the white again, okay? And I am going to start applying these colors. So let's first start off by applying um, the spots of, of the cow. So what I'm going to do is I have my pink here. I'm going to pinch off a tiny bit. Okay. If I put it beside, it's going to be about that size. Okay. Maybe I'll pinch off a little bit more. Okay, we want to save about this much, and that's going to be for the ear, okay? The other part, okay, I'm going to start making the spots. So to make the spots, what we're going to do is we are going to roll um, just a round shape. It doesn't have to be a circle, okay? Uh, just make a general round shape and then we're going to flatten it a little bit okay and what we're gonna do is we are going to apply that we're gonna stick that onto uh, onto our cow so I'm gonna start by put, putting this on the top right corner so let's put that um, put that right over maybe I'll take a little bit off just pinch a little bit off. Okay. And we are just going to put that onto the top right corner. And then we're going to flatten it on. Okay. 
So we're going to flatten it as much as possible. And now you can make the shape of your spot. So we're not going to keep the spot just round like this. What we can do is we can press down and drag the colors, the color towards a different direction. So that way our spot isn't perfectly round. We want to have a more irregular shaped spot. So it's more like a cow. Okay, you can see that I'm pressing and I'm just kind of pulling it in different directions. And then you want to make sure you get the edges as well. So right now you see the edges it hasn't reached the edge, but what we can do is we can pull that down as well. Just don't when you just need to be gentle when you're handling polymer clay because at the end of the day it is clay and it's not super soft but if you handle it and it's and you don't handle it gently you're going to um deform it so maybe i want to pull this spot down a bit more Okay, so that is our first spot. And then another spot we can do, so we're gonna take the same, we're gonna take the same color and let's do one on the bottom left corner. Maybe this is a bit too sharp here. I'll pull this back in. And then let's do a bigger spot in the bottom left. So you can see it's just a general round shape. Maybe this one, I'll just do like an oval and then we'll flatten it first. And then we'll just apply it on. Okay, and once it's applied on, we can further press it down more. And then now we're gonna start pulling it towards the directions we want. So maybe I want to do more like a bean shape. I'll press this back in and then flatten it some more and then pull it into the directions I want it to, to go. And you want to make sure that it's relatively flat. This, this color on the white doesn't have to be completely flat, but you still want it to, you don't want to stick out like a bump. Because at the, it, it's still, it's just, it's basically part of the cow's skin. So it's not like it should be sticking out a lot. Don't have to worry about the back too much because it's going to be covered by the magnet anyways. Just, can just get some irregular shapes in here. And then when you have areas like this where it's not even, um, all you need to do is just take your finger and just run it along the clay and it will smoothen it out. And that's what you're trying to do. If you have any cracks or any unevenness, just run your finger through it and it will smoothen it, it will smoothen it out. So for example, like right here, you can see it's not very even. Well, I'll just run my finger along it and that's gonna smoothen it out as well. So let's say that it's pretty good for the spots. You don't want to have too many sharp corners. I have one right here, so I'm gonna smoothen it out. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the nose. So for the nose, or let me just show you at an angle what I have right now, at a better angle. So this is what I have right now. Almost looks like an egg with um, some gum stuck on it. 
Anyway, so now we're going to move on to uh, the nose. Or actually, why don't we make one of the ears first? So using that same color that we had before, remember when I told you to keep a little bit left for the ears? So now we're going to make the ear. The ear is really just a, uh, a triangle. Okay, so we'll roll it into kind of a ball first, and then we're going to pinch one side a bit more. Okay, so we're going to pinch one side, almost like a teardrop shape. Okay, and we're going to apply that to, let's say, right over here. Like that and then the other ear we'll do after um, that ear is gonna be white but now let's move on to uh, the nose first so to make the nose we're gonna take our lighter shade of pink okay uh, or whatever lighter shade you have so this shade should be very light it should be really close to the white um just a tiny bit off the white so you can see my pink is actually very light okay so this is going to be for the nose so to make the nose first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll a sphere in our fingers like this um it's, this sphere is maybe just a bit smaller than the size of the ear um, and then once you have the sphere you want to make it into like an egg shape again so you're going to roll it sideways a little bit okay see the shape of that and then let's put it maybe right above the middle so if i'm just to lift it up and let you see Maybe let's place it sideways like this, uh, just above the middle, like that. And then we can flatten it a, li flatten it a little bit. Okay, let's see. And then, now this, this next step, we're going to make the holes in the nose. Now, you can use Sharpie for this. Um, or if you have extra clay from making the uh, making the spots, you can also use that as well. Uh, making it with the spots, making, it with, making the spots uh, or the holes with the clay is a bit harder because you need to peel really, really tiny pieces and then roll them into spheres. So that's why using the, uh, the Sharpie alternative is also not a bad idea. Um, but just to show you, I, I'll, use the, uh, I'll use the clay. So to do that, we have to grab a very tiny, and I mean very tiny amount of clay, which you'll see that, that much, okay? It is very tiny and the reason why is because um remember when you flatten something it will actually get bigger so right now we have this sphere that is tiny but when i flatten it then it will be the right size okay so you can see that's what it looks like right now but once i flatten it'll actually get bigger now the challenging part is not only working with such a tiny piece of clay but the next piece you peel also needs to be a similar size and if it doesn't and if it's not similar um it might not look good because then you have one hole in the no one of the nose holes that's big and the other one is small okay so i have my second one you can see it is very tiny OK, 
Okay, so that's what it looks like. Okay, and now while we're uh, working with this lighter shade, let's make the horns of the cow. So to do that, all we're going to need to do is just take a piece of the lighter clay and we'll just roll it. Okay, so this one, there's probably a bit too much, so we can just peel it and work with the smaller piece. And we're just going to roll it until it is a cylinder. Don't make it too long because remember that after you bake it, it's going to be hard. You don't want it to snap off too easily. I think this is a good length over here. Okay. See the length of it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to attach this right above the ears. Right over here. And we're just going to press down. We're just going to push it in. So that it sticks. Well, it, once you push it, it's going to shorten a little bit, but that's okay. So that's one of the horns. And then we're going to do the other one. And actually, let's make the other one, but we won't attach it. We'll make the other ear first after. And then once we finish the other ear, we can attach the horn. So here I've made my second one already, just rolling in my fingers. Okay, and then now we need to make the ear. So since we're handling the white, um, let's go clean our hands quickly first. So now I've cleaned my hands, so I'm going to make the ear. So same process as the previous ear. All you're going to do is just take a sphere of the white, and then you're going to pinch one side into like a triangle or teardrop shape okay like this uh make sure it matches the size or it's around the same size so that's good and then i'm just going to attach it right Let's see maybe right over here just opposite of it okay and then we can pick it up and press it in a bit more so it stays especially after we bake it Okay, and then we're going to attach the other horn that's also right above this ear over here. So remember right now it doesn't look like it's even, but remember when you push in the horn, um, it's, going to, uh, it's going to flatten. All right, so that's finished. So that's our cow. And we're going to bake this at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, remember it's Fahrenheit, not Celsius, for 15 minutes. Um, and the, you're probably wondering where are the eyes? The eyes we are going to add on after, um, after baking. We're just going to put, we're going to uh, just draw that on with Sharpie, okay? So our oven has preheated up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit and the timer is just around 15 minutes. So to bake polymer clay, you don't need parchment paper. You can use it if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, don't use wax paper that's going to burn in the oven. Uh, alternatively, you can also use like a ceramic oven proof plate but you can actually just put it straight on this baking pan as well so and that's what i'm gonna do so i'm just gonna put it here okay and um it's gonna bake for 15 minutes so you can see for me uh this oven there's a bottom rack and then there's a middle rack okay um you don't want to put your clay right by where the heat comes from. I know for this oven, uh, the heat comes from the top. So for example, in that case, don't put um, 
the don't put the tray on the top rack there's no top rack on this one but you don't want to put it on the top rack otherwise you're gonna risk burning it um, if the heat is from the bottom uh, then you don't want to put your tray on the bottom rack because it's gonna get a lot hotter okay and then we'll be back in, a, in about 15 minutes just to check on it when it's finished so the polymer clay is now done baking now I could just leave it in the oven or leave it on the pan, like take it out and just leave it on the pan um, to cool down. It'll take a bit longer to cool down like that. Uh, what you could also do is you can remove it off of the baking pan uh, and maybe put it on a plate or something. That way it will cool down faster because right now the baking pan is still hot. So uh, we'll just let that cool down for now. So now our cow has cooled down. So we're going to add the eyes and we're gonna glue the magnet on. So for the eyes, I'm just gonna use the Sharpie here and let's just put it right above the nose over here. So that's one. Then let's do the other one. Okay, so the eyes are done. Okay, and then we are going to add the magnet. So for the magnet, what we're going to do is we're going to put some glue and put some super glue and the magnet and then we're going to put our cow on so that it covers the whole magnet and doesn't stick out from the side and there you have your little cow magnet This is perfect for on the on your whiteboard or maybe you can put it on the inside of your locker.